Okay, so uh, yeah, sorry that it's not Owen and, it, and it's me again and you have to put up with me for a third day, but uh, Owen wasn't able to, uh, to, to travel to uh, Spain this week, so uh, we still wanted to have the presentation. So uh, again, like a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the talks that we've had over the last few days, this is uh, a team effort, although uh, the slides have Owen's name and my name on them, there's uh, four more people involved. Uh, I'm going to miss somebody out, but we really do need to thank uh, Nigel Burke, Rob Fuller, uh, Damien Smith, Tara Kina, Andrew Conway, uh, and Rob Thomas, and the rest, and Didra O'Driscoll, and the rest of the uh, data management team at the Marine Institute for the work that's gone on into uh, into uh, Ireland's integrated digital ocean. So, um, in uh, in the last IMDIS conference, Owen uh, did give a presentation where we kind of introduced the concept of um, an integrated digital ocean for Ireland, where we're gathering together data from multiple uh, originators, multiple sources around uh, the country of Ireland uh, and providing access uh, to those data through, um, through an integrated portal. Um, really, we've seen this morning uh, a lot of activity is moving offshore. Um, the last talk there where we were talking about uh, the blue economy, um, it's absolutely key that, that as the blue economy grows and all of these activities take place uh, around uh, our marine areas, that we have access to the data that are being collected in all of those different platforms and we make them available to all of the different uh, stakeholders, end users, in a, as quick a way as we can and in as high quality a way as we can. And so I'm not going to touch uh, so much on the quality process because Rob uh, has already covered that for us this morning. But what I really wanted to emphasize uh, from this slide is that, that we have a huge range of end users and it's not just uh, the people who are either paying to take the data or paying for the data to be collected. There's people who are trying to make livings out of using our data by uh, generating new marine renewable energy platforms and putting them out in test sites, uh, particularly around Ireland. We have uh, a couple of different test sites for marine renewable energy and there's people who use, their, use the data that we're generating and publishing for their leisure time as well. So. There is this massive range of stakeholders. And uh, within DigitalOcean, we have uh, data from a huge number of sources. Um, there's a couple of extra logos on here from uh, last time we presented on DigitalOcean. Uh, the BODC logo is up there. Um, uh, and we've taken some data uh, that BODC manage on our behalf and uh, integrated it into, into the DigitalOcean platform. Those are the uh, Argo floats that that the Marine Institute deploys, uh, BODC do the data management for us, and then we've uh, pulled them back into DigitalOcean, and we'll see those in a minute. Um, there's a whole bunch of uh, wave boys that the uh, Ele Electricity Supply Board in Ireland, ESBI, um, put out, uh, again, this, the marine renewable energy, and Rob's talked a little bit about that this morning as well. And um, further to the Marine Institute's uh, tide gauges, we've also incorporated the river gauges from the up Office of Public Works, so their logo's up there as well. And again, you've seen this slide this morning, but there is a, there is a national focus on uh, driving a thriving maritime economy uh, in Ireland. And um, I guess from our perspective in DigitalOcean, uh, some of that is through providing access to the data through uh, APIs so that people can begin to uh, use kind of digital economy uh, type tooling and uh, uh, IT and, and software infrastructures to to build uh, an economy around marine data, um, and uh, there's healthy ecosystems, and so we we have uh, a lot of ecosystems work and aquaculture work and uh, marine environment work going on in the Marine Institute and uh, promoting uh, that and those data, and uh, going back to this idea of uh, the range of end users having something that's attractive to people. To come in and use um, uh, to come in and use and to access data in different ways um, can drive this engagement with the sea uh, that, that's uh, there in that third goal. And this is a slide that uh, isn't an island slide. Uh, that's why there's an Australian flag on it. Um, but uh, I think it kind of illustrates some of the some of the things that, that we're trying to get at in, in digital ocean. I think some of the, the challenges that we all face. Um, so. Uh, there's this drive in Australia for a blue economy uh, in 2025 with $100 billion per annum. But I think some of these 10-year steps to success 
are absolutely key to some of the things that, that we're trying to do in uh, DigitalOcean. There's a massive overlap there. And some of the things that we, uh, we all really should think about as uh, to how our data are used. So decision support tools, um, we, we focus quite heavily on the marine renewable energy industry, as you've heard. But then models and forecasts, and we'll show you some model data incorporated in a minute. Um, obviously, we're a government agency at the Marine Institute, but we try to partnership both with other government agencies and, uh, and industry. Again, there's cross-disciplinary skill sets. This is something that keeps coming up in, in uh, Earth and Space Science Informatics all the time. Research vessels, the Marine Institute, we operate two research vessels, so our data uh, we're just beginning to explore putting those data into DigitalOcean. Uh, mapping, uh, we'll show some of the developments around uh, Infomar and the Irish uh, Seabed Mapping Survey uh, in the next few minutes. Um, we've just heard about baselines and uh, marine spatial planning is of course one of those things in Europe that's absolutely key at the moment as well and, uh, and we're trying to leverage some of the uh, DigitalOcean work to, to facilitate that within Ireland as well and of course national and international collaborations, which is why we're all here this week. So again, uh, something that we've seen, um, can taking our data, presenting it, integrating it to create information, integrating it so that uh, it's you, the, data, the information is used to generate new knowledge, new scientific knowledge. And then instead of wisdom at the top here, we've put policy, um, because wisdom and policy maybe don't actually equate all of the time. But, uh, but what we're starting to see is that policy is then feeding back into the bottom of this pyramid. It's actually driving some of the data collection programs. It's driving some of what we're doing in the informatics as well. And so I think what we're seeing is this feedback loop is, uh, is, um, is beginning to, to really uh, warm up. And uh, this is just, uh, um, just very quickly go through this. But one of the things we're, we're conscious of is this data value map that came out of the University College of Cork. And what we're trying to do is you narrow know, this gap between the data creator and the data user. We've got a, a wide range of, uh, of data users. We've already seen all the logos uh, for the data creators that we use. But we're trying to add value here by integrating the data and delivering the data through the digital ocean with uh, value um, of clearer access to marine data for our end users, improved range of data and services in our platforms, and having this national focus on integrated marine data. So some of, the, uh, some of the recent developments, just a few highlights. Um, so we've uh, taken, uh, the top left there, we've taken the, the UI and we've uh, upgraded it recently. Uh, it's now um, kind of material design, very responsive. It now works on your, on your mobile phone, which it didn't before, which is, which is kind of quite nice. And uh, taking that on a bit further, some of the work that's been done around, um, around the Infomar seabed mapping survey uh, we were using kind of standard web map services to deliver those. Uh, there's so much data behind the Infomar uh, uh, systems that we've actually switched recently to using uh, tile services. They're much more performant. And again, you can access now the bathymetry uh, and the contours, uh, the contour products that are coming out of that on your mobile in the digital ocean. And you can, uh, you can really zoom in even if you're just out of the beach for a, for a day out or if you're, if you're sailing, although uh, those data are not to be used for navigation purposes. Um, in the bottom left, you'll see um, you'll see that grey blob there. Um, that's actually a, a three-dimensional representation of uh, a shipwreck that the uh, Infomar Seabed Survey did a very high-resolution uh, side scan sonar over. Um, what you can't see is that that's actually a screen grab from an augmented reality device, a Microsoft HoloLens. And so we've started exploring uh, some three-dimensional visualizations and some of the new technologies that are available. And just in the, the bottom right here, it doesn't show very well, but we'll hopefully see a, a video in a minute or two um, visualizing current flows uh, in, in, in the web. Um, and that's thanks to some of the work that, that SOKIP have been doing. And we've taken their leaflet time dimension uh, toolbox for the leaflet mapping uh, JavaScript library and added that in and uh, kind of did a little bit of work with that. And so here, um, here is not live data, but uh, a recording of some live data from, from Galway Bay. Um, again, this is, uh, this is kind of linked to some of the Sea Data Cloud work and some of the sensor observation services. Uh, we put this out over an MQTT, Internet of Things protocol channel. Um, you should see some of the numbers are flicking over as well as the camera, but we're starting to be able to take actual kind of real, real, real time values here, uh, get them out to people. This is actually in both 
Uh, as well as being available online, it's in the aquarium in Galway, which is the National Aquarium. It's also in the uh, museum in Galway. So it's driving that engagement uh, with the sea and engagement with marine data. Uh, people are seeing this every day who wouldn't normally be seeing it. Um, just to give you an idea of what the, uh, the look and feel uh, of, the, of the digital ocean is, uh, is like now. So um, here are the Argo floats deployed by, uh, by the MI. Uh, you can click on any of those. You can add in all kinds of other layers uh, here as well, the weather boys, the tide gauges, and you get the same kind of plots, the same kind of graphs uh, for all those things. But we just wanted to highlight the Argo floats. Uh, with each of the profiles, you get a TNS plot and the temperature and salinity profiles through, uh, through the water column. Again, this is some of the 3D visualization work that's been, uh, been done by the Infomar Seabed Mapping Survey. And so a lot of these uh, are available uh, online, and we've taken a few of them. Um, they're all available in the DigitalOcean website, uh, the 3D models, but we've put a few of them into uh, the HoloLens, and, and that's kind of, it's very showy-offy. Um, it's not necessarily something that you can do for everything and for everybody, but it's, it certainly does have a bit of wow factor for, for uh, showing to people. Um, we've also taken some of the Infomar data, and this is actually just a native JavaScript uh, um, visualization, but it's, it's slightly exaggerated looking down through Galway Bay from the Aran Islands here. Uh, so we're in the uh, southwest looking to the northeast. But you can explore that in your, in your web browser. Uh, hopefully you can see here, this is one of the operational models that we publish. It's the same area, it's the, uh, the Aran Islands, but the currents are moving. Uh, that also can step through in time. And again, that's taking this uh, leaflet mapping and the, and the web map services that are there. So Rob showed this slide before. Uh, our data do end up in a lot of different places. Um, one of the things we were conscious of was we had a lot of endpoints to those, uh, to those data, and we've been trying to collapse those down. Again, reducing the confusion, reducing the proliferation of uh, access points. And so I showed this catalog yesterday, and it's been developed as part of the DigitalOcean um, program. Um, you can one-click download from Discovery. So from that Discovery page, you can download uh, data that have a download function with them. And um, some of the data sets in here have uh, DOIs. We have a data site account with the British Library, and so um, citations for our data sets are, are growing as well. Um, just a final uh, kind of thing that we've been working on is uh, using this GraphQL um, interface. GraphQL is a query language for APIs, which has been developed by, uh, by Facebook. And so we've wrapped this around over the ERDAP data server. And so you can go in and kind of programmatically explore um, the data that's behind uh, an ERDAP data server. We have a few examples of things here. So that's just the latest Argo floats that we have behind our ERDAP server. Again, just a tiny bit of code to show, but that's what a query on the left-hand side um, looks like in, in GraphQL. And you can see that you get uh, just a JSON document back with um, the platform number, the time, the latitude, and longitude. And um, you can see from the top there that you can uh, kind of push a button and get JavaScript. So you can just embed this straight into your, into your web page. But there's also Python and R, so you can drop them into Jupyter Notebooks. So, uh, so we still have quite a lot of work to do. We would still want to grab more data from uh, the various organizations around Ireland who want to uh, we want to kind of firm up some of those relationships and to kind of increase the, the range of services that we're providing. But I think you can see that hopefully we're adding a little bit of value to, to the data that are collected by, by bringing the users and the data closer together. Thank you.